Okay, thank you everybody for joining us. This is our second member town hall uh, this week. My name is Joe Manzoli. I'm the COO of the YMCA Greater Nashua. Uh, and we're excited to have you come back to the YMCA. Uh, we know uh, it's been a, a really crazy time for all of us. Uh, and as we've been adjusting uh, to new work and new family situations um, and just guiding our, our way through this current situation we're all in, um, we, we appreciate your patience. We appreciate those of you who have been able to stay with us and, and support the great work that we've been doing in the community. Uh, you're going to hear a little bit more about that uh, as we move through the presentation today. Uh, as I said earlier, we're going to be able to answer your questions as we go along, hopefully during the presentation. And then at the end, uh, we encourage you to just post any questions in the Q&A box uh, as we move forward. Uh, so we're going to, in a second here, I'm going to introduce you to Steve Lynn, who's our Chief Volunteer Officer, uh, who will be speaking on behalf of the Board of Directors. Um, and then Mike Lachance will be speaking to you about what, what the Y's been up to um, and share all the great work that's been happening. Uh, I'm going to then walk you through what we're calling our member playbook uh, as we prepare to reopen um, in the next week or so. Uh, we'll, we'll be able to tell you what's available, what's not, and what will have to happen as people come back. And then Katie Parker is going to talk to you a bit more detail about what the member experience will be, what you will uh, see when you arrive at the YMCA and what the process will be like uh, so that we can serve you well. And then Jackie Camino will monitor our, our questions and, and make sure that we get as many answers to you as we can. So with that, I'm, I'm proud to introduce Steve Lynn, who's the Chief Volunteer Officer for our Board of Justice. So Steve, take it away. Thanks, Joe. And could I just ask the panelists to give me a little thumbs up that you can, you can hear me okay? Great, excellent. Hey, um, really excited to be on this call today and uh, listen to the staff, uh, Mike, Joe, and others talk about the reopening of our facilities uh, for the Greater National YMCA. It's been quite an experience uh, these past 12 weeks, and we've had really strong commitment to our organization demonstrated by the community, by the staff, um, and by the board of directors. Um, my name is Steve Lynn. I'm the chief volunteer officer or chair of the board of the Greater National YMCA. I have been for a couple years. Um, just want to do a couple things um, just the role of the board and and then transition over to uh, to Joe to take it away. And then I do have one ask of, of all the members on this call uh, to join us as we reopen. So the role of the board, uh, we seek to support the Greater National YMCA through governance, um, setting a strategic vision and plan, and through fundraising. And the way that we do that is by meeting together, talking to members, talking to the staff, talking to the community, and making sure that the why is addressing the needs of all of those populations. Um, it's been an honor to do that. It's been a pleasure to do that. It's really exciting work. And um, our organization is, um, is, is at a point where um, we're thrilled that we'll be reopening the facilities and engaging with all of you, our membership, um, hopefully in a way that evolves back to uh, a more typical interaction and more typical use of our facility. So um, our, my ask is this, it's, this isn't the end, uh, this is the beginning, right? The beginning of the reopening of the facilities uh, plan and it'll continue to evolve. I think one of the words of the year has been fluid and uh, I know the staff are doing every single thing they can to have this be a successful reopening. But we do need to hear from you, the membership. So please reach out to welcome desk members, to Joe, to Mike, because um, we want to learn through this together have a safe environment, have a healthy environment, and uh, look forward to seeing you all in the facility soon. So with that, I'll uh, hand it over to Joe. Actually, I'm gonna uh, introduce you to Mike Lachance, our, hand our it over CEO. To Mike. Great, thanks, Joe. Thank you, Steve. And Steve, thank you for your leadership uh, and that of the Board of Directors. Um, it's been great to be able to bounce ideas off of you and work with you as we've uh, We've, we've done this over the last several months. Uh, first, thank you to our members who are joining us here on the call today. Um, it's been a, uh, it's hard to believe that it's been over two months since we closed the doors of our branches. Um, but we want you to know that we did not close the doors of the organization. You know, we've, we've adapted, we've been serving our community in a different way. Um, we're blessed that as a, a not-for-profit in the city of Nashua and the surrounding communities, um, that we are able to serve our community in a different way. And 
you know, I know that you're here today because you want to hear about how we're going to be able to serve you in the future. And uh, we're excited. You know, we did receive word from the governor's office on Friday that we are uh, going to be able to reopen um, beginning uh, sometime next week. And we wanted to spend some time with you here today about what that's going to look like. It's going to be a little bit different from what you might experience, um, but we're going to get through this together. And as Steve said, uh, having your feedback along the way is going to be beneficial to us. You know, we want to provide the safest experience for you and your families, and but we also want it to be a worthwhile uh, and positive experience for you as well. Uh, I want to take a couple of minutes and walk you through a few of the things that we've been doing in the community since uh, we closed our branches back in mid-March. Uh, up on the screen here, you can see here's a few different programs and services that uh, you may not have been aware that we were even doing. And some of these we were not doing before we, uh, we closed our doors. And so, as I said before, we've been able to adapt and serve our community in different ways. On March the 16th, we stopped all programs at our branches. And we, uh, we started having conversations that week with Southern New Hampshire Medical Center and with St. Joseph Hospital about how we could serve them uh, in a time of crisis as they were ramping up to deal with uh, the pandemic. And the biggest need that they had was finding support for their staff, and that included childcare for their workers. And so the following Monday, on the 23rd of March, we launched an essential childcare program for uh, those first responders and hospital workers. That first week, we only had 12 children. Uh, you know, today, we're serving more than 100 children through, those, through that uh, particular program in our Merrimack branch. Food insecurity. Um, we began a partnership with the Nashua Soup Kitchen and Shelter and with the United Way of Greater Nashua to begin providing fresh fruits and vegetables to hundreds of families across the city. At eight different locations, our staff are out there on a daily basis uh, making sure that food is getting in the hands of those that need it in our local community. Our seniors, as you probably are aware, we have thousands of seniors that participate in different programs and services at the Y. We know that many of them are dealing with isolationism and other factors that, um, that we know that we can provide some support to. So one of the first things that we began doing when we closed is to have our staff reaching out to our senior members. And I wish I could sit here today and say that we had called every single one of them four or five times. But I have to tell you, you know, some of those seniors were particularly struggling more than others, and they needed a little bit more of our time. And so those calls that we might have thought might be five or ten minutes in length ended up being 45 minutes to an hour or longer sometimes, um, just because for some of them it was the only voice that they had heard of in a little while. Some of you are aware that uh, we launched a virtual line of programs and services, everything from wellness classes to um, instructional programs for young children to um, STEM programming. And we have um, hundreds of hours of virtual classes and programs that have been offered over the last couple of months. And when Joe talks a little bit later on, uh, we're happy to share that because of the response from our membership, we're going to continue that in some way. Partnering with others in the community. You know, I mentioned a few of the partnerships already, but in addition to those, um, the American Red Cross is another important one that we started a couple of months ago. As you can imagine, um, the issue with the pandemic across our country, um, that has actually caused uh, blood drives to be canceled um, in excess of 10,000 drives across the country in the last two months. And so having our facilities and having a partnership with the Red Cross we have been able to host a couple of blood drives already, and we have three more scheduled over the next couple of months. And I just encourage each of you that if you're able to give blood to do that because of the shortage that we're dealing with across our country. Um, on this next slide, you'll see that um, we've got a few more things that we've been working on. Our teachers. So one of those programs that we stopped back on March 16th was a large early education center and after school child care program, uh, collectively serving more than 500 children on a daily basis. Those teachers are so committed to the children that they continue to read bedtime stories to the, to the children uh, via Zoom, um, 
follow up with their lessons on the curriculum that they were working on in the classroom, and just stay in touch with those families to, to support them. Uh, virtual instruction, I mentioned already the Beyond Our Walls program, but in addition to that, we also have some of our programs that have continued in a virtual way of uh, moving. And I'll take our dance program for one. Uh, with 360 children in our dance program, Progressive Dance, we have um, uh, Tiffany Joslin, our um, Arts and Humanities Director, shared with me that 280 have continued to stay involved uh, in that way. Um, it's not easy, as you can imagine, but um, it's that important to them. Supporting others, you know, we've talked about blood drives and, and food distribution, but we've also hosted food drives at our Merrimack branch. And the food that's been dropped off by our members, our staff, and our community has also provided support to the Salvation Army and N68 of Hours of Hunger in our local community. Um, industry leader, your why is one of the larger whys in northern New England. And as you can imagine, um, it, it's, it's our responsibility as a larger Y to support many other smaller Ys across our region. And they may not have the staff and the resources to be able to do that, but they have to have a plan for how they reopen. And so they've been reaching out to us to help guide them and to support them along the way. Additionally, the... Um, the um, Governor has uh, started two task forces in our state, and one was focused on reopening industry across the state of New Hampshire, and the second was focused on economic relief and support for those industries, including the not-for-profit sector, child care sector, and others. And I can proudly say that our team here was involved in providing information and presentations to the governor and his task force to assure him and the the volunteer leaders across the state on how um, different industries should be reopened and the support and resources that they need to be able to continue to be sustainable in the future. Uh, shortly before we closed our doors, uh, we were in the process of making some great things happen for our members. Um, one of those, energy efficiency is important to us for sustainability, for our environment, um, and we were in the process of preparing to convert all of our facilities to LED lighting. And um, that did not happen. As we closed, many manufacturers closed across the country as well, and we were not able to get the bulbs and fixtures in uh, over the last couple of months. I can share today that we are in the process of making that happen, and that will be, that's expected to be completed by July 1st. And lastly, uh, an equipment upgrade was scheduled to be done for our Nashua branch and for our Westwood Park branch. Uh, new Cybex strength equipment had been ordered. Um, it was delivered while we were closed, and you'll find that uh, the equipment is in place uh, when we reopen our doors. So I, I hope you can um, share the, the pride that I have and that our team has of how we've been able to adapt and to support our community during a very difficult time. And it just shows you how um, your organization can adapt to meet the needs in our local community. So with that, I'm going to turn it back over to Joe and talk about the, probably the most important thing that you're interested in, and that's our reopening. So Thanks, Joe. Mike. And uh, for the second time in a, in a row on a town hall, some of those equipment upgrades that Mike talked about are happening right now, right outside my office. So I apologize if there's any background noise uh, as we speak. The, the timing was, was uh, impeccable. Um, so we're excited to share with you our, our plans for reopening uh, but I want to share two things before uh, we, we dive into that. One is that uh, we've been planning for an early June reopening uh, for the last couple of months. So while all of that work that Mike just talked about has been happening, uh, we've, we've been hard at work at planning out what reopening would look like. Um, on Friday, the governor came out with uh, guidelines and a date as to when we can reopen. And I can share that those guidelines were a little different from what we anticipated. Uh, so our team is still hard at work at uh, shuffling things around. So we, we won't have every single answer for you today, um, including exactly what day we're going to open. Uh, we are committed to reopening next week. Uh, we just don't know quite yet if that will be Monday or a little, little later in the week, but we will have information out to everybody uh, within the next day or two on when that will happen. The other thing I just wanted to point out is that as we go through this, I'd like you to be thinking about, uh, while it's important that we take care of our personal health, 
and reopening our YMCA facilities will help all of us do that. Uh, while we're taking care of our, our personal health, uh, we also play a role in our public health. And so there are guidelines in place to not only keep each other safe, uh, but to ensure that as we leave the Y and go back out into the community, that we're keeping our community safe as well. Uh, everything that we're doing uh, is meant to keep you safe, your family safe, our staff, and our community safe. Uh, so we're, we're looking at our reopening in three stages. Uh, stage one will be right off the bat, and there'll be some limited hours and services based on the guidelines that we've received from the state of New Hampshire, as well as the CDC, and from what we're learning from YMCAs that have reopened already around the country. Uh, we've been in touch with them uh, multiple times a week uh, to learn about what they're seeing. Um, and in some cases, we're going to hold off on some services that maybe we could run on day one, but we want a little bit of time uh, to, to adapt to these new systems before we re reintroduce them. Those will be re reintroduced into stage two. Uh, so as uh, guidelines shift and as our uh, capacity shifts, we'll reopen uh, certain services uh, and certain programs as we go. Stage three are programs and services that we don't anticipate running uh, in the near future. Uh, and that may be a month or two. Uh, and that's based on just current guidelines around group sizes, um, physical contact and things like that. And so we'll be adjusting our facility hours and our services as we go along. Before I go to the next slide, just one more reminder that if you've got questions, uh, go ahead and enter those into the Q&A box and we'll answer those at the end. So we're gonna focus on our stage one. Before I don't go into all of this, and I'm sure you're already re reading ahead, uh, here's the overarching guideline that we have in terms of what's available. We can run a, a lot of our normal programs and services just in a different way that requires uh, you, the member, uh, to reserve a spot into a program. Uh, and we'll, we'll talk about that in a little bit. So our, uh, we, we can open up indoor and outdoor group exercise classes. So our staff are hard at work at uh, identifying which classes we'll be able to offer throughout the day. So those would be your typical uh, group exercise classes like yoga and Zumba and things like that. Um, but we also are going to get, we have an opportunity here to get really creative uh, with offering new programs, uh, both inside and outside. Uh, we will, as Mike said, we're going to continue our virtual group exercise classes. In some cases, those may be live streamed live classes. So we may have a Zumba class that's happening at the Y that we can live stream for people who either aren't comfortable coming into the Y quite yet uh, or you know, the time didn't work out for them to come into the Y. Uh, so we're going to expand upon our virtual group exercise programs. We can run uh, group strength and conditioning classes and group cardio classes. And I'm going to talk about these in a little more detail in a, in a couple of minutes, as well as functional training classes. Uh, personal training will be available. Uh, if you've been working with a personal trainer in the past, you can continue to do so. If you haven't, now's a great opportunity. We can run water aerobics classes uh, and we can offer lap swimming. Uh, and as Mike said, we've, we are the largest child care provider in the region uh, and we're able to, to reopen our child care program beyond just the essential workers. We're also uh, planning on running day camp. We don't have guidelines yet on when day camp can start and what uh, what our, our guideposts will be for that program, but we've been working really hard uh, with the YMCA of the USA, the American Camp Association, and the CDC on what we believe those guidelines will be. I'm going to stay on what's available before we move on to what's not. With, with all of those programs, there will be a reservation required in order to participate. Uh, so as I switch over to the what's not available, you'll see that individual use of exercise equipment is not available. What that means is I can't wake up and say, I feel like hopping on a treadmill today. I'm going to go to the Y and get on a treadmill. You have to reserve a spot during a time block. So we will have a, a really robust schedule of everything that's available throughout the day. And uh, you can go into a, a reservation system that Katie will, will talk about in a little bit uh, and reserve your spot. So I can still come in and just run on a treadmill. I don't have to be part of a Zumba class. I can just come in and get on my treadmill. I just have to do it during the time block that I, that I signed up for. Uh, Kid Stop will not be available during stage one. We hope to be able to offer that soon. Uh, we would use the same guidelines we're using for our childcare program to be able to run Kid Stop safely. Uh, but at this time, we won't have that available in stage one. The indoor track won't be available. Uh, the steam room and the sauna uh, will not be available as, either. 
um, really because of physical distancing. Any youth or adult group activities, so those would be swim lessons, sports classes, sports leagues, uh, pickup games, uh, racquetball, tennis, those will not be available in stage one. Uh, some of those might be available uh, in stage two. We don't have a timeline on when stage two will start. That will be different for different programs and services. So we may, within a couple of weeks, say we're ready for a certain service to, to begin, uh, or we get guidelines for that. And in other cases, it could be a month, uh, but those, those activities will not be available. Uh, we've removed any personal equipment uh, off of our floor. So yoga mats, stretch mats, towels, magazines, books, board games, uh, all of that's been removed as has any sitting areas. So we can't have people uh, come into the Y and just congregate uh, and, and hang out in the lobby, which is something that I know is really important to a lot of people to have that time. And we're looking at ways we can still offer that uh, within the guidelines, uh, but that likely will not be inside the building. Uh, this new setup where we can uh, schedule out all of these activities and have a reservation system means that we can create different blocks. So we can have uh, senior blocks or uh, blocks for people who are in vulnerable populations where we say, for example, from 11 a.m. to 12 p.m., we're going to have uh, four or five different programs going on around the Y that are just for people in that population. Um, and so those will be interspersed throughout the, the day at times that make sense based on, on past usage. Some of the things that we've been doing uh, to make sure that you uh, are as safe as you can be, uh, we are, are quadrupling the size of our daytime cleaning staff. So we've been uh, really investing in our, our cleaning. Uh, behind all of what you're seeing here, there are pages and pages and pages of other documents, in, in, in this case, just on how we're gonna be cleaning our building. So we're really uh, staffing up in our daytime housekeeping, as well as keeping our overnight crew that we've had all along. We're increasing hand sanitizers throughout the facility so that it, it, wherever you are, you can get a, a quick pump of, of hand sanitizer. Um, we are also adding machine wipes uh, throughout the building. Uh, so not just in the fitness area, but, but in all common areas. So if you're in an area and you need to, you wanna disinfect something yourself, you can just pull a wipe and, and do that yourself. Uh, we're looking at how we can create a more touch-free environment. So you know, what, where can we uh, replace something that you used to have to touch uh, to, to operate? Um, can we get something that's more automated? So we're still working through that. Uh, and lots of signage. So we just had today uh, a whole, a whole uh, crate full of signs that will be up around the building to help you guide you with both uh, what's available, what's not, uh, social distancing markers and things like that. Um, in terms of our, our staff, uh, all of our staff and volunteers, uh, when they arrive for work, will have their temperatures checked. Uh, they'll go through a quick uh, health screening with some questions that they'll be asked and they'll, they'll have to wash their hands right away. Uh, if any of our staff or employees uh, have a, a high temperature, uh, or answer any of the questions uh, positively, uh, they, will, they will not be coming into work that day. Uh, all of our employees and volunteers will be wearing face coverings when they're in common areas. So that's pretty much everywhere you would see them. Uh, there are some spaces, whether it's in an office uh, or if there's a space where we know that we can maintain at least six feet of distance, uh, our, our staff will not be wearing masks, but, but any of the staff that you see in common areas will have face masks um, when they're working. The exception to that would be a group exercise instructor or someone who might be running a cardio program or a strength program. Uh, they will not have to wear masks, but we've, we've built in uh, physical distancing for them. All of our staff are going through a, re, a reboarding program, so they'll have more staff training on our new environment and what they need to do to make sure that we're keeping all of us uh, as safe as possible. We've added plexiglass screens in the welcome center, the fitness desk, anywhere that you might have any interaction with our staff. Uh, we're, we're identifying new member engagement specialists. So in some cases, these are people that you already know that just might be in a slightly different role as they help with checking in our members or helping you find uh, where to go or helping clean equipment uh, or helping get classes started. Uh, we're also gonna be reintroducing a new management software uh, for your membership. So if you've done anything online uh, to register for a program or to manage your account, you've done that through a program called Daxco. Uh, we're moving on to a new software called Personify that will be live very soon. 
And we believe that will give you a much better and easier experience to do what you need to do from home. So you don't have to come to the Y to register for a program uh, or manage your account. You'll be able to do that much easier online through that program. We're also gonna identify uh, staff in our facilities who are available to answer any questions when you call the Y, uh, that you'll be able to get to somebody and have your questions answered. And we already talked about our, our enhanced uh, group classes. As I said earlier, we're all you know, looking forward to coming back to the Y and taking care of our personal health uh, but we all play a role in the public good as well. And so, and Katie's gonna walk through some of this uh, as well on the next screen, but uh, as I shared what our staff and volunteers are gonna have to do when they arrive, we're gonna be asking our members to do as well. So all of our members, everybody who comes to the Y uh, will have a quick temperature check. We're gonna ask you uh, some, some quick questions. Uh, and those questions would be like, you know, have you been exposed to COVID? Are you feeling well today? Uh, those kinds of questions. And we'll, we'll give you some hand sanitizer as you come in. We ask that you, while we've enhanced our cleaning staff internally, we ask that you take it, you help us out. Uh, so any equipment that you're using, we ask that you wipe down both before and after. Our staff will be doing that as well, uh, but we ask that you take care of your equipment uh, when you use it. Uh, keep your distance from one another, and that's it can be hard, particularly as we all come back and you see old friends and you see staff that you remember. Uh, we can't run over and give each other a hug as much as we'd like to. Uh, so we ask that you keep your distance uh, as you're, you're in the facility. Uh, if you're not feeling well, uh, please stay home, particularly if there's any symptoms that, that may be worrisome, um, but we just ask that you stay home. Um, we are asking all members to wear a mask when they arrive at the Y and when they're walking about the Y. If you don't have a mask, we'll provide one for you. You do not have to wear a mask when you're working out. So if you're on a treadmill or you're swimming or you're taking a Zumba class, you're taking a spinning class or you're taking a strength class, you don't have to wear a mask uh, when you're doing those things. We're building in physical distancing for all of those programs. So in our studios or in our gym where we're having group classes, we're gonna have markers on the ground to tell you exactly where to be. Uh, our equipment will either be physically spaced out or we're closing down uh, every other piece of equipment, whichever one uh, makes the most sense for that area. So we make sure that you're, you're keeping your distance uh, as you go. In the pool, it's gonna be one person per lane uh, for lap swimming and for our group exercise classes in the water, we're gonna have distance markers uh, on the lane lines and on the pool deck so you know where to be in those classes. So when you're taking those classes, you don't have to wear a mask, but when you arrive and when you're out and about in the facility, uh, we ask that you do wear a mask. That's actually per local ordinances. Uh, and the last thing I'm gonna talk about uh, before I pass it on to Katie is, and this is really important, is that we, we all show compassion for one another. You know, the wise core values are caring, honesty, respect, and responsibility, and they all play a role. Uh, they always play a role for us, but they really play a role now. Uh, it's important that we take care of each other, uh, that we understand that uh, we're all gonna make mistakes as we go along. There's gonna be some time that you might see me you know, pop out of my office to throw something away and I didn't put my mask on. Or uh, maybe I'm standing a little closer to Mike than, than you think I should. Uh, we're all gonna make some mistakes. We ask that you show compassion. Uh, our staff will help uh, reinforce those rules as we go along. Um, but now is not a time to be you know, taking pictures and posting on social media of people that are doing things that you don't agree with. Uh, we're all doing our best and we ask that you, you show compassion for one another as we do that. So with that, I'm gonna pass it on to Katie, who's gonna talk a little bit about the member experience and what you can expect upon return. Great, I just wanna get a thumbs up that my audio is okay for everyone. Great. All right, so I'm gonna walk you through the member experience. And before I do this, I just wanna share that um, like everyone, uh, this is the first time we're navigating uh, reopening post pandemic. Um, so, what I share with you today may not be exactly what it looks like on day one or day four. Um, we are navigating this and listening to feedback and what otherwise are doing. And um, it's, it's going to be really a fluid situation. But what I can share is that our enthusiasm and excitement to have you back at the Y is unwavering. And I am ready to get that ball rolling. So with that, um, as Joe outlined, um, every activity at the Y as we reopen in phase one will require a reservation. So I'm gonna talk through that a little bit so you have an understanding of what that's gonna look like. Um, at this point, reservations will be available to members only. 
So in order for us to best serve the members of the YMCA of Greater Nashua, guests and nationwide members will not have access to our Y. Um, in fact, nationwide membership is currently um, on hold. So um, that also means that you will likely not have access to visit another Y in the region or the country. So just be aware of that. Um, we'll notify you as those guidelines change. Um, before you arrive at the Y, you should have a confirmed reservation for a class or a lap lane. To book a reservation, you'll need to have a valid email address. Um, and this is primarily for any communication that we would need related to your reservation. Um, we're committed to publishing the most up-to-date schedule of activities. At this point, we're going to publish that on a weekly basis as we become uh, more acquainted with the environment and what we're able to offer will expand as much as possible and that could happen um, very soon. Um, we will have reservations available for up to, to, up to two days in advance. Um, so you'll be able to log in, um, you'll be able to go to our website and see the schedule that's available for you and book two days out of reservations. At this time, we'll limit one reservation per day to ensure that we can serve as many people as possible. Um, and if you need to cancel a reservation, we ask for a minimum of two hours notice so that we can alert waitlist participants where applicable. And in a lot of cases, if you've used our reservation systems before, so this would be something like Super SAS for group cycling um, or any, any class, um, uh, the pickleball even, any reservations, it's very similar to that process. Um, if you are on the wait list, you'll be placed in the class and notified immediately. And that's why the email address is so important. Um, that's how you'll be notified that you have been accepted into the class um, or this space in the Y. Um, class times will be staggered to ensure that not everyone is showing up at the Y at the same time. So just keeping that social distancing in mind. Um, you will be able to view the schedules and reservations through the schedules page on our website. And again, this is where we've always published our schedules and had our reservation system available. So that should be familiar if you've done that before. Um, if not, we have staff available to guide you through that process or make the reservation for you if needed. Um, each participant requires their own reservation, meaning you cannot sign up for a class time for yourself and your spouse with a single registration. Um, at this time, we will not be able to accept a walk-in or a drop-in. So if you're just driving by the Y and you want to drop in for a class, hoping that there's a class available, just try to do so from a mobile device. So both our website and our reservation system are mobile responsive, so you don't need an app. You can just navigate from your mobile web browser to access that. Um, as you arrive at the Y, we ask that you arrive a few minutes prior to your class time. Um, due to the guidelines outlined, we won't have space available to gather or socialize before or after class times. And I know from my decade at the Y that this is a core component of who we are and what we do. It's gathering in that social time. Um, and unfortunately, we will not have that rate out of the gates. Um, so after and before class, you um, need to continue to maintain that social distance. When you arrive at the Y, you'll be greeted uh, by a team member for a contactless temperature check. Inside the welcome center, you'll find a sanitization station for hand washing or hand sanitizing, as well as a quick health questionnaire for you to complete. And these two steps, the temperature check and the questionnaire, will happen with every visit. Um, with your first visit back to the Y, as Joe mentioned, we are updating our membership system. So with this um, switch to a new software, we're asking our members to update their waiver and their membership agreement for each member that's on the membership. Um, and we'll guide you through this process. Um, we will have a system in place so that we're not sharing pens um, and we are spaced as we're signing and going through that process. 
we'll have multiple team members. You'll likely see me a lot um, helping with the flow of traffic. Um, we'll also have a lot of signage and markers um, posted either on the walls or in common areas or even on the floor, letting you know where um, spacing and, and areas for those different waivers and stations would be. Um, last, you're going to check in your regular facility, check in either the key tag or with your mobile device. The same membership card that you had when you left will work when you return. Um, so you'll just check into the Y and a team member will confirm your reservation and make sure that you know where your class is located. So while you're at the Y, um, you'll notice that we have updated signs and markers throughout the facility. So not just at the Welcome Center, but even in the group exercise classrooms or the various spaces. Um, as Joe said, we've retrained our staff with um, with um, new practices in place, but they'll also be retrained with responsibilities to include regular sanitation of high touch surfaces throughout the building. Um, as mentioned, please be prepared with your own personal equipment. So a face mask, a yoga or stretching mat, if that's what you like to use, um, or if you're taking a class that requires one, a towel and a water bottle. Water fountains will be available for filling only. Um, class times, as I said, will be staggered to allow um, not only the spacing and the social distancing, but also allowing our staff teams the appropriate time to sanitize um, each space in between sessions. Um, and then lastly, I would just ask that you follow any prompts from instructors or Y team members at the start and end time of each, each session. So before you take or replace equipment, they may have instructions for you on how those should be sanitized or where to leave them before or after class. Um, and before I move on to our support that we're ready to provide, I will say if you're not ready to come back, as Joe said, we have an enhanced virtual experience coming. Um, we've been fortunate um, to be able to purchase uh, professional live streaming equipment so we can live stream classes out of Studio C in Nashua. Um, and we're very excited to get this going. We'll have more details on the live streaming coming very soon. In the meantime, if you've participated in any of our virtual offerings, those will all continue as they have for the last uh, two months or so, all of those virtual live and uh, the library of classes we've had, those will all continue. Um, so in terms of support, our staff, our membership team, we're here to help you. So as we reopen, our team members are, um, we are dedicated to getting you to your class quickly and easily. Um, and to best serve you, our phone lines will be dedicated to answer any questions related to membership, reservations, or any other requests, even if you just need someone to talk to. Um, we know that's an important piece of what we do here at the Y. Um, as I said, we've mentioned, uh, we've already mentioned the membership management system has been updated for easier navigation. You'll be able to access your payment history and facility usage, so you won't even need to stop and, um, and get that printed. You'll have access right at your fingertips. Um, and then the last is that um, we will monitor all of the processes that we've implemented to continue to modify um, and provide the best and safest experience for you at the Y. And before I turn it over for questions, I just want to, as a reminder, um, make sure that everyone is aware that we do have financial assistance available so that you can continue to access the services and programs of the Y. Um, if it's the one constant that you can have during this stressful time, we're here for you um, and we want to support you with that. Um, a team member is available to discuss those options with you in confidence um, and we're happy to help. I've included the email address at the bottom of this page. Um, that's monitored by myself and our membership directors, and we have been responding as quickly as we can. So I'll turn it over to Jackie for questions. Thank you, Katie. Okay, the first couple of questions we have are membership questions. So for those who have changed their membership fees to donations, when can we go back to being a paid member and how? So that will happen um, automatically. So no action needs to be taken for those members. 
And the second membership question, my membership was put on hold. How do I change that? So if your membership was put on hold, it was placed on hold through 531. So May 31st, 2020. So all memberships, if you take no action, will resume billing in the month of June. If you decide that you'd like to extend your hold, you can do that through our website. Uh, the next question, when will everyone be notified as to when we can start reserving spots? Yeah, we, we will be getting information out uh, within the next couple of days, uh, reviewing everything you've heard here. Uh, someone, I also saw a question, someone asked if, if this is being recorded. It, we're recording each of these town halls. We'll pick the one that uh, felt the best and we'll include that in any communication. So all of those things that, that Katie just went through, we'll have that available. Uh, we'll also have exact details on how to go about reserving your, your spot. So we hope to have that uh, within the next couple of days. Okay, what age do you consider senior? That is a good question. And we will make sure that that is clear when we uh, get all of our information out. Will locker rooms and showers be available during phase one? They are available and uh, with, with physical distancing. So we're gonna have some signage uh, in the locker rooms. Uh, showers are available. Uh, and as I mentioned earlier, we've increased our cleaning staff. So those spaces are going to get a, a good cleaning all day long and overnight. Okay. Um, sorry, Katie, another membership question. Will monthly fees be reduced if one decides to solely use the virtual exercise programs because they are in the vulner vulnerable population category? So at this point, we have not discussed uh, membership fees, but that's a great question. And um, if anything changes, we'll communicate that directly with members. How will you be handling the airflow within each facility? Will the fans and ACs continue to operate? They, they will, yeah. The, the air air conditioning um, we've got, actually, that might be who's out here right now. We've got our, our HVAC company that we work with and have been working with for decades. Uh, they've been hard at work at making sure that everything's uh, up to speed. Also saw a similar question around, you know, just airflow and will, uh, studios be open? Are we using small spaces? So we've been working with our public health department on just, you know, how the virus works. Um, and just last week, we got an update from the director of the public health department on uh, air par particles and how they, you know, fall to the ground and they don't just hover in a cloud that then gets sucked up into uh, ventilation. Uh, so we feel very, very confident in our ventilation systems uh, and our airflow. Um, next question. Could my son who is a member be able to have a staff, pers staff person with him who is not a member because he needs someone with him? Yeah, I, I think for that, uh, you know, if, if you can contact us uh, directly with an email just so we can learn a bit more about that. We do know that we've got uh, both children and adults uh, who need to have an aid with them. Uh, and so we'll, we just need to check in with you. Sometimes those are through groups uh, that come in. Uh, but if it's a one-on-one -on -one situation, uh, we do need to have that person in our system. So if you can just reach out, out to us directly and we'll walk you through how that might work. Okay. Um, will temperature checks and health questionnaires be touchless? Yes, they will be. Okay. I usually do water aerobics, then 30 minutes of leg ex exercises. Would I now need to do these on two different days? That is a, an excellent question. Um, it would not have to be in two different days, uh, but, but there would be different times of day that different things are, are available. So uh, that's a really good question. I, I just frankly don't have a, a firm answer for you, uh, but because of that question, we'll make sure that we, we get uh, that clearly uh, communicated when we get everything out. I'm a member of the Westwood branch. Can I still use the Nashua branch? Yeah, absolutely. So your membership uh, is always, uh, you can use any of our three facilities. Uh, again, some of those facilities may have different hours uh, as we move forward over the next few weeks. Uh, I can tell you the Westwood Park will not be open on day one, uh, but we will be reopening Westwood Park soon. Uh, so yes, if you have a membership, wherever your membership uh, is, is normally based, you have you've always had access to all three of our branches. When will, we be, when will we be able to use the weight system, the rack, bar, plates, and bench? Yeah, so you'll be able to use that equipment as well as our cardio equipment. Uh, 
when we open. It just has to be during a scheduled time. So it will, it will look like a class. So we may have a strength class. That doesn't mean we're gonna you know, make you do certain exercises, but it's a way to make sure that we can control how many people are in that space and that it's getting cleaned as we go. So uh, all of our equipment is available when, you're, when you reserve a spot in one of those predetermined times. If and when summer camp, camp opens for the summer, when should parents register for a spot? Yeah, so I would, I would register once, once we have the guidelines. So once we know when camp can open, uh, so first let me back up. If you are already registered for camp, you are still registered for camp and you will continue to be registered for camp. If you have not registered for camp yet, uh, we, right now we've, we've closed off registration until we know exactly what our guidelines will be. We anticipate getting those soon. The governor knows that it's, it's of great need uh, so we hope to get the guidelines on exactly what camp will look like and what the dates are, and we'll get that out to everybody, and that will include uh, registration options. Will SuperSAS still be used for group cycling? If so, will it, same rules and restrictions? That's a great question. Um, we are looking to combine both our live streaming and our reservation system into one software. Um, but we know that to open the facilities, we need a, an electronic reservation system. So it will either be Super SaaS or a new um, software called MindBody. You will access the reservation system the same way. So it will all be through our website. Um, and all of the instructions will be outlined um, on our website. I know someone else asked for the link and it's nmymca.org backslash backslash schedules. Nothing use, is published now though. Sorry. No. <laughs> Can I use the showers without signing up for a class? Uh, no, you, you'd have to come in and be part of a class because we, we have to we have to know who's coming in and what they're in for. These are the guidelines that, that have been put out. So uh, you can certainly shower uh, you know, after your class. Um, if you don't need to, please don't. Um, again, you know, we've got some space restrictions. In, in some of our branches, we have what we call express lockers. Those are the lockers that are just in the fitness center. Uh, if you just need to store your stuff, that's, that's better than bringing it into the locker room. Um, but, but we can't just have people come in just to take a shower. Does the National YMCA have an exemption to the recent Nashua requirement of wearing face masks? We, we do not uh, for entering and being in the building. There is an exemption. I don't know if that's the, quite the word, but the guidelines that have come from the state and the city supports is that while you are exercising, you do not need to wear a mask. But other than that, uh, you do need to wear a mask when you're in the building. And that is not just for the Nashua branch, that's for the Merrimack branch as well. What will be the airflow exchange rate? Uh, that That's a... a question beyond my, uh, my knowledge. Uh, we, will, we will try to post some, some Q&A uh, or some, some FAQs on our website and we'll see if we can get that answered for you. Our, our facilities director would have that for you. I currently have the Y app. Do I need to download a new app in order to make reservations? No. So as I, as, I, as I shared earlier, all of this is through our website. So nmymca.org on the schedules page. And both our website and the scheduling um, software is mobile responsive. So you don't need to do that. You can still use your phone to access this, but it's not through an app. Um, will spin classes be available in all three facilities? They will be when the when the branches are open. As I said, Westwood Park uh, won't be open right away. Um, we, we will be opening that soon. Uh, but yes, spin classes will be available. They may not be in the same location that you're used to. We may do that on a basketball court uh, or, or some other location, but we will have spin classes. Is it possible that the pool will be, will be available for family use at some point this summer? Um, <laughs> hopefully, yes. That, our, our, our hope is that there will be uh, probably in a phase two the ability for a family to reserve space in the pool uh, for recreational swim. Uh, under the current guidelines that's not allowed uh, but we we hope that we, and we have been planning for that frankly we, we had hoped that that would be part of the guidelines that we could do that uh, for a family to kind of reserve a block in the pool 
but as of right now, that won't be available. We hope we hope that will be uh, as the summer moves forward. If a member of the staff or a community member tests positive for the virus and notifies you of such, how will this information be shared with its members? Yeah, that's a great question. So uh, the, the process that happens if someone tests positive, uh, they are immediately introduced to someone from the public health department. And the public health department then goes through an interview process with that person. Um, and that's the contact tracing that you hear about on the news. If during that conversation, the why is brought up, the public health department will then make a de determination what that means for us. So it may mean that they say, hey, you need to close the Y for 24 hours and do a deep clean. They may say, well, this person uh, you know, showed up at your building but didn't go in, um, and so you just need to focus on a certain area. So we'll be taking all of our guidance from the public health department uh, on exactly what will happen from there. Uh, when someone arrives, whether it's a staff member or a member, when they arrive, if they have a high temperature or they've answered any of the questions uh, that we're asking them in the positive, uh, we, will, we will ask the person to, to not come in. We're not keeping any of that information, um, but we will, we will have to turn that person away. We will also provide them with information on where they can get tested uh, and, and encourage them to do so. Again, having a fever doesn't necessarily mean you have COVID. Not having a fever doesn't mean you don't have COVID. We understand that, uh, but these are the, the, the guidelines and the processes we're putting into place. Um, let's see. When will Westwood be opening? Um, you said not day one. Are we talking day five or not until phase two? Yeah, it's, it's a rolling thing. And, and, and what it is, folks, is, is um, and you, you, you'll read about this. This isn't, this isn't unique to us. We want to make sure that we've got uh, the staff to be able to serve you. Uh, so as we're recalling our staff, we want to make sure that we have enough there. Westwood Park just has some unique challenges because it's such a big, wide open space. Uh, and normally we can staff that fairly lightly. Um, and so we've, we've, we've determined to just hold off until we feel really co com comfortable with the operations in the other branches. Um, and so I anticipate that Westwood Park will be open in some capacity. It may be for certain blocks of time for certain classes uh, within a, the first you know, couple of weeks. Uh, it's just, we just wanna get into this first week, see how it's all working um, and then be able to go back out. Um, and then we have a request to please repeat the website listing for registration again very slowly. We'll, sh we'll send all of this by email. Um, there's nothing to register for today, so you haven't missed out on anything. Um, but our website is n as in Nashua, m as in Merrimack, ymca.org. I'm a okay, fast talker. Sorry. <laughs> and I believe this is the last question. If a member comes to the Y and does not have a mask, will you be able to supply them with one? We will. So we certainly ask if you've got masks to, to bring your own, uh, but we do have uh, a large supply. We've been really fortunate to be able to uh, get all the PPE that we need uh, to be able to operate for both our staff and our members. So yes, we'll have masks for you if you need one uh, or if you forgot it. Uh, but if you do have a mask, you know, please, please bring it. Okay, thank you. That was the end of our question. So I'll let Mike do the uh, closing remarks. Great, thank you, Jackie, for leading that effort. Uh, first of all, thank you, everyone, for joining us today. Um, you know, and not just for joining us today, but for staying with us over the past two and a half months. Um, I know it's been difficult for everybody, um, and although it may not be your normal visit to the Ys, you're hearing what we're going to launch uh, for reopening. Um, but it's your why. It's the same staff. It's the same friendly members and everybody else. And and we're looking forward to having you back. And we're excited to have you back. Um, it will be a little bit different, but we have to get through this together. Our whole world has been a little bit different the last two and a half months, and this is just another phase that we're all going through together. Um, you know, you heard um, quite a few answers today to your questions, and I, I hope that reassured you that we're taking the right steps. Um, I, I know that I feel very comfortable on where we sit here today um, versus where we sat two months ago. And um, as we go through, we'll continue to get answers for you. We want you to stay connected, to reach out to our staff or to Joe or I or Katie, Jackie, if you have any questions. Um, but thank you for taking some time out of your day to be with us today, and we're going to see you real soon.
so thank you, everyone. have a great day.